Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for market intel, forecasts, and success strategies. This segment is brought to you by Bull Realty Asset and Occupancy Solutions. Visit bullrealty.com. Well, today we're talking about technology. We're talking about data and how you can use technology and data to power your business and your corporate business and your real estate business. You know, it's pretty amazing how much we use data today to make informative decisions for corporate relocations and also for investment property sales and for financing. Please welcome my first guest. It's Bill Fisher. He is CEO of Plum Lending, and he's joining us on the phone today. Bill, thanks for being with us. Thanks for being here, Michael. Always, always a pleasure to be with you. Bill, it's been pretty amazing how much data is being used in technology in the commercial real estate space. Tell us a little bit about Plum Lending and how using data to help commercial real estate property owners make better financing decisions. Yeah, thanks, Michael. At Plum Lending, we've chosen to uh, believe that uh, by focusing on data science, we can help transform at least some of the stodgier, stodgier areas of uh, commercial real estate lending. You may know that Big data has been slow to arrive um, in the commercial real estate lending world, Uh, but now that it now that it begins to arrive, it looks like it has the power to transform really virtually every aspect across the spectrum. Yeah, it's really amazing how technology is being used today. And if you're not driving a car, uh, if you're at an office location or something, uh, go to CREshow.com. I'll put a link. Uh, to the Plum Lending website. It's amazing what you can do there, how quickly you can search for loans. But what else are you guys doing with technology at Plum? Absolutely. And, um, again, the use of data just um, can not, not only make the process much faster for, uh, for those that are, that are in the commercial real estate markets, but, but a lot better. Mm-hmm. It really has the opportunity to make profound changes across the spectrum. And, I, and I'll just give you one example, Michael. We just launched the first ever fully automated commercial real estate appraisal platform. Commercial real estate appraisals um, have really not kept pace at all with the explosion of big data. Um, Most commercial real estate appraisals are relatively unchanged since the mid-1990s. As a result, they take too long. Um, They're they're largely accomplished in Word and Excel as static paper-based PDFs. Um, and we've been able to access data and, and take a, a process that today often takes 45 to 60 days to get a commercial real estate appraisal ordered and, and, and actually delivered and collapse that down to five. So it, it's not just the advent of, of speed, but it's also making it better uh, for about the same price as you would end up paying for the time and the materials for someone to go out and take pictures of a building. Today, you can hire a drone to circle that building several hundred times and actually build a 3D model of the building. <laughs> so it's, it's a brand new age that's coming. Yeah, it's amazing what we can do today with technology and with drones. And what do you say, Bill, to folks who are a little bit apprehensive about doing some of the things you can do online? You know, we talk about maybe going online to get a loan. You're going to provide some information about yourself and your property, everybody's concerned about cybersecurity, what should we be thinking about? Yeah, well, I, I would encourage uh, anyone, whether it's in commercial real estate lending or any other aspect of life, not to adopt any technology that, that they don't feel comfortable with. One of the approaches that we took um, in building plum lending is we have as much technology as you would like to access. So we have uh, you know live relationship managers that work directly with our clients. But they plug in as much technology as, as the client would like, would like to see. We have clients that only want to interact with us um, in an online fashion, and we have those who would like to plug into us through live conversation and, and have, that, have that conversation and that transaction enabled by, by the use of high-speed high speed data and, and transaction technology. So I, I don't think it makes any sense to try to force people to, to move in a direction. Um, I think once they have a chance to sample things at their own pace, 
uh, they, they, they will adopt, of course, a better solution and one that's faster. So, Bill, it seems like commercial real estate, at least in past years, has been a little slow to accept technology, but things are moving along a little quicker now. Why do you think uh, that's the case? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things that, that are at play there, Michael, in, in the speed of change or the lack of speed of change in the commercial real estate markets. One, one has to do with the sheer complexity. So if you look at some of the changes that have taken place in, in credit card or consumer credit or business credit, those, those areas are far less, less complex than yeah. commercial real estate. Um, so I think the, 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 the complexity itself has proven daunting. I think another reason is you know, most entrepreneurs are, are the drivers of change, and most entrepreneurs are out to change things that they have personally experienced that they believe can go better. It's only a tiny fraction of, of, of the American business community that has even experienced owning a commercial real estate property. There's something less than a couple of million property owners. As you know, you, you have to be somewhat wealthy to actually play in the game, and most entrepreneurs being young, they just haven't experienced that, so there's been a lack of there's been a lack of entrepreneurial talent attached to what is inherently a complex issue. I will mention on that topic, though, the change is coming. Um, um, of course, innovation has to be financed because innovation doesn't pay for itself at the outset. But there are huge pools of capital that have now been formed to attack the commercial real estate fintech industry, and for three typical reasons. One is the, the money that's stacked up for innovation looks for large markets. Of course, commercial real estate being on the order of $13 trillion is one of the largest asset classes out there. The money that's stacked up around innovation looks for markets that have been slow to adopt technology, and everyone agree, would agree that that's true of the commercial real estate world. And last, the money that's, that's, that's tied up around innovation looks for markets that are inefficient. And I don't think there's any of your listeners who are at work in any of the different aspects of commercial real estate that wouldn't agree that the commercial real estate markets are still largely uh, very inefficient. So change is coming. Uh, it's certainly time for your listeners to pay attention. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. You know, technology's really changing. We just created a new website at my firm at Bull Realty. And, you know, you can now go online through DocuSign on our site and sign confidentiality agreements. You can also sign and execute offers to make offers on property. So do you think we're going to continue to see this bill? Are we going to continue to see technology change at a rapid pace in commercial real estate? It seems like there's a lot of complexity in commercial real estate, and you really need some people and some relationships as well. Yeah, it absolutely does, although I, w I would mention that the sheer complexity of it um, is actually a boon for those who, who will begin to attack uh, the inefficiencies through data science. Um, of course, data science partly depends upon being able to access huge and complex databases and then see within those databases, um, um, you know, un un heretofore unknown uh, relationships between different pieces of data that produce actual insights. Again, the fact that commercial real estate is so complex um, then, then, then yields the fact that you have you know, a huge number of very complex databases that you can draw on. And that means that now that data science is beginning to come to the commercial real estate markets, you should see things accelerate at, at a blinding pace. We're talking with Bill Fisher, CEO of Plum Lending. Bill, what would you say to users today of technology? When they're trying to figure out what technology to use, it seems like there's a lot of choices out there. Again, I think given the fact that it, it is a complex world, I, I think uh, most people in the commercial real estate world are going to want to adopt the technology at their own pace. I think mm -hmm. they're going to look for providers like Plum Lending that offer you a mix of, of, of high-touch high -touch personal service and as much technology as you, as you would like to employ. Um, but without actually force-feeding you technology in a way that could cause you uh, to be concerned either about the sanctity of your data um, or, or about the actual experience. So I, I would encourage people to, 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 to use the technology that they, they encounter, but to do so in a way that, that allows them to, to mix it with the relationship that makes them comfortable. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. You know, you need the relationships and need the one-on-one -on -one contact. 
uh, to help make uh, more of these transactions easier to close. Well, Bill, thanks for joining us today. Well, stay tuned. We'll have more on technology for your commercial real estate endeavors. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show.